I haven't seen him ask to join yet. I shot him an email with the Zoom info, so hopefully he should be able to log on any moment now. Well, we can get started, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Okay. Um, so I can start. Okay. I'm Andrew McNichols, staff planner for the Town Hall of Reading. Thank you all for joining us um, as we host our first ZBA Zoning Board of Appeals hearing over these remote measures and through the Zoom program. So please bear with us as I'm sure we're all on a learning curve. Um, for those of you who haven't used Zoom before, uh, just to share some of the measures. Um, in the bottom left of the corner, there's a mute and video function. Uh, you can use that to mute yourself and also unmute yourself to talk. I also have the ability to mute everybody and I ask that applicants who aren't ready to discuss yet and if it's not their turn, please mute yourself to avoid any background noise. Um, and then as we get to your applications, we can unmute, of course, unmute yourselves and go that way. There's also a raise hand feature. If you see on the bottom list, there's a participants button. If you click that, that should give you the ability, you should see a button that says raise hand. So that will let me know that you have something to say on the screen. Um, and I can then unmute you and allow for your comment, uh, just so we can try to keep it organized and efficient. So please do use that function. And if you have any problems, of course, you can always just try to speak out. Um, but please do wait your turn. Um, I would like to add that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast live on RCTV and that um, we have three applications tonight before us. Um, so we can get the, um, sorry, the way this will work for each application is that we'll try to keep it as close to normal as possible where Sai will roll call each board member if asking if they have a, any questions or comments on it, the given application, and that board member can then speak to the applicant. Um, so, and then the applicant will have a chance to respond, will open to public comment, who will, everyone will use the raise hand feature, and then we will go back to the board for a roll call vote, where Sai will again call the member to vote on the application, yay or nay, um, if we get to that point. Because I would like to add that the town of Reading has a set of protocols and what we're trying to follow is best practices right now. And what we'd like to ask for each applicant is that we would like to continue these meeting, this meeting tonight again, um, just in case there are any technical difficulties or anyone that wants to comment and cannot, at least after the meeting, they will be able to provide some comments to us. Um, because again, this is our first meeting held remotely for the Zoning Board of Appeals, and we just want to give everyone a fair chance to be involved, although there is a high number of people here, which is great to see. So thank you all for joining. Our zoning board members include Chairman Sai Kawet, uh, Vice Chair Eric Hagstrom, Nick Pernice, Hilary Mativ, Jamie Mon, and Robert Redfern. So with that, I will give it off to Sai for some of his introductory statements. Uh, excuse me, Andrew, just before you do, um... I, I'm an associate member normally, but in how, how is that going to work tonight? Do we have a quorum? Um, we do have. have oh, is Hillary? Hillary is now a full member, correct? Not yet. Oh, Not yet. Okay. okay. Um, so, so w w which of us will be voting? Not not that it matters, but so if, if Bob Redford, vote. if Bob Redford is not on the video on the meeting line, then you will be a voter. Right. Um, so it's typically Cy, Bob, Nick, Eric, and then we haven't filled our full time, so we'd need an associate typically to vote anyways. Um, but if Bob is not here, both Jamie and Hillary will be voting. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, can uh, we get started? We can. Um, I will just also add that I have the ability to share my screen and I will be sharing a number of materials with everybody just to make sure we are all looking at the same thing, um, if it helps. Jamie? Are we ready? I believe so. Okay. As uh, Andrew said, my name is Cy Coet. I'm the chairman of the zoning board. And uh, we have three cases before us this evening. I will officially call the meeting to order at this time. And the first case on the agenda is case 19-21 for 61 Summer Avenue. This is a case that was opened, believe it or not, back in September of last year and continued uh, for two times until this evening. The petitioner, Mr. Daniel Princick, has requested a withdrawal of his application without prejudice. So I don't think there's much to discuss here with this, uh, unless uh, Mark or anyone wants to make a comment relative to this that uh, presents something we don't already know. If that's the case, if that's not the case, I would move forward with a motion from one of the board members to accept the petitioner's request for withdrawal without prejudice. So Mark has his hand raised, so go ahead, Mark. Uh, yes, just for the, the board's information, um, I was called out to the site, uh, it's a couple months ago now. They did remove that portion of the deck um, and then they did supply a new certified plot plan showing that the remaining portion of the deck meets the 15 foot setback. So there's, there's, there's no longer a violation. Good, good. Great. Any other comments from uh, the board? Then I'll entertain a motion to, with, uh, to accept the petitioner's request for a withdrawal without prejudice. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Do I have a second? This I'll is second. Oh. Hi, Go Bob. Ahead. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Made it. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the nick of time. Okay. I didn't hear a second. Nick second. I think, okay, I think, thank you. I think Nick did. The voting yeah. members on this will be Bob Redford, Eric, Nick, myself, and Hillary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sounds like it's 5-0. Yes. yes. Motion is accepted. Okay. I think the next case is case 20-02, 30 right. Dale Road. I'll read the legal notice. The Zoning Board of Appeals will open a public hearing through remote and online measures on Wednesday, June 3rd at 7.30, although we're doing it a little sooner, on the application of Mr. Ed McCormick, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Paragraph 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw, Sections 5.3.2 and 5.4.7, to construct an attached accessory apartment contained within new construction of a single family home at the property located at 30 Vale Road in Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters lists, except to say that the abutters were notified, as well as the select board, town clerk, police department, fire department, building department, conservation commission, health department, assessor's office, engineering division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, 
as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if any of you think you may want to speak on this case this evening, please raise your right hand at this time. And you uh, will respond with, I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The answer is, I do. Okay. I do. Thank, Thank you. you, Nancy. <laughs> Here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, th I think Mr. McCormick, I think, is here. Is he not? He is here, yes. Yes. Uh, okay. But that's me, yes. Then I guess either he or you, Nancy, uh, we would ask to take the floor now or take the video. That's right, exactly. Uh, that's that's right. Right. what you are asking from us this evening. That's correct. I'm the spokesperson for my me architect, Nancy Toomey, for this project. Um, I don't know, Andrew, will you put drawings up or do you want me to share my screen, whatever? I can share the screen, I have them up. Okay, that would be great. This project is um, adding uh, a, a portion of the apartment to an existing raised ranch. So uh, on these drawings, I think it's really clear if we talk about it, the apartment it's as a raised ranch, I don't know if you know that term, but the first floor is a slab on grade and would be considered the basement, except that it happens to be not a basement, it's fully above ground. And then the second floor is the living quarters, typically. So downstairs is usually a, a garage and then a family room and upstairs is the kitchen and the bedrooms. In this particular case, we are adding on a small addition uh, 11 feet out uh, towards an easement and then uh, it comes forward 32 feet and then across and sort of uh, hugs the front of the existing house to make a front porch. Um, yes, here you go. So you can see the red is the addition. Um, so mm -hmm. 11, 32 and then 23 out. Then we've taken part of the existing structure to make the uh, complete apartment. Um, as you know, this project was on the docket back in March, and to keep the process moving, we did get, I just wanted to let you know, we did get an, uh, a permit to start the construction without a, you know, uh, without making it into an apartment. So it's simply a structure that anyone could add onto their house. It's two stories upstairs. Uh, Andrew, if you want to go forward to the the, the drawings for the architecture mm -hmm. yet. Uh, keep going one more page, I think. There you go. This so was that's the existing. existing. Yeah, lower level. You can see there was an existing garage, uh, an existing bedroom, and a bathroom. And if you go to the next page, there is uh, the second floor, which has the kitchen and three bedrooms and a family room. Then the next page, will show you what we did on the first floor. So this is the apartment space. We took over the garage, we use the same bathroom, and we have a living area and a potential kitchen. So we were able to get a permit just for the structure itself. It completely conforms with all of the zoning bylaws. Um, and what we didn't do was if you see where the laundry is, we have not done that portion. So it is open to the main level and we have not put the kitchen in as of yet. And it's still under construction, it's still rough framed. So if we go to the next page, you'll see the second floor and the extension on the second floor. Um, so you'll see that we extended a master bedroom and we added, uh, and by that extension, we added another bedroom. So it's still three bedrooms on the second floor with a nice master bath. If you go to the front, keep going, Andrew, mm -hmm. there's the front elevation. So you can see that the door to what we hope will be the apartment is, it, you can't see, you can see the main door and there is a gable over that entry. Um, and the lower level that comes forward is where the living area is. And the next elevation, just so everybody can see, that's the side where the driveway is. Mm -hmm. uh, to the right would be the kitchen. Upstairs are the two, uh, the two bedrooms. And then the last is the back uh, elevation. 
and uh, oh no, nope, you left the back. There you go. <laughs> and that's the back door. There's two back doors. One for the main house um, because the front entry is up front. This is the back for egress. And then for the apartment, the door is off the side at the front where that front entry is. And this is the second means of egress at the back. So our, our goal is to make this an accessory apartment. It is going to be less than a thousand, it's gonna be about a thousand square feet. It is uh, when, when the addition has been completed, the entire principal dwelling will be approximately 3260, 3,260 gross square feet of finished and habitable space. The accessory apartment will be about 968 gross square feet of habitable space which is less than the allowed thousand square feet and less than one third of the principal dwelling. And then um, in our application, we went through all of the standards that Reading has set forth in the zoning bylaws. And uh, of course, these are our opinion and we hope that you agree, but there's only gonna be one accessory apartment. It's a completely separate unit with one bedroom, one bathroom and a kitchen. And then uh, it meets the zoning bylaws in terms of square footage. Um, the McCormick family will be living on the main single family area up on the second floor, which is traditional for a raised ranch. And the appearance of the home still remains that of a single family dwelling with a clear front door and then access to the porch, to the apartment is off of the porch to the side. All stairways will be located within the main house and uh, there is plenty of driveway access on the side as it is currently. Um, there is an easement on the property, so we do not encumber that easement. We are out of, outside of that easement, but that is where the driveway is and will continue and be expanded. Um, and then all the uh, utilities will, of course, be part of the uh, main principal dwelling. Well, that's what I have for you. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Uh, I will look. Mark, do you have any comment to offer at this time? Not at the moment. Thank you. Then I'll turn to the board members for any comments they may have uh, relative to uh, uh, what has been presented and what we have reviewed. And I'll go to, I'll start with Bob. How, Bob Redford? Yes, yes. How are you doing, sir? Uh, good. Uh, a question, question I had in, it, it looks like uh, the, all the renovation, the expansion of the house and everything else all needs zoning setbacks. And I don't think they, you know, they've already received a permit for that, for that construction. That's and cool. so, right. So, so what they're looking for is a special permit as an accessory apartment use. Uh, question, uh, Nancy, uh, the parking yes. is all going to be on the east side of the structure now uh, in the driveway that is going to be on top of that sewer easement. That's and I, I, right, and I, I assume Mark can maybe comment on this a little later or when he gets a chance, but I assume even though it's a sewer easement, it can be paved over in that area and parking can be done there. And how many vehicles will they be parking there? Do you know, Nancy? Uh, we're showing three on the site plan right now. So two for the main house and then one for- One the, for the apartment. apartment. Correct. Right. Okay, uh, other than that, that was my only uh, questions. Other than that, it, it appears to me that they've met all the uh, criteria uh, for an accessory apartment on that. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, yeah. Eric? I can just add um, for Stephen, we're gonna open to public comment just after the board speaks. Um, right. So we'll let the board go first and then we'll open to public comment. So I'll turn to Eric at this time. You know, I, I took a look. It seems like a, a very straightforward project, exactly, you know, what we had, you know, as a town intended with the bylaw. I don't see any problem with it. Thank you. Comment, Nick? Uh, thank you. Um, so, yeah. The applicant appears to meet all the performance standards. Uh, I think it especially retains the appearance of a single family home. Um, I don't see any issues with this application. Thanks. Thank you. Hillary, how about you? I'm repeating what uh, Nick and Eric said before. I think it looks, it's a very attractive uh, addition and it meets the zoning requirements. 
I don't see a problem with it. Thank you. Uh, I uh, feel the same way about it. Uh, I think the presentation was very good. I think the material that was provided was good. Uh, they walked us through all the criteria of 5473 and uh, uh, I, I can't see where uh, it's anything but satisfactory. So uh, unless there's any further comments from the board at this time, I would like to open up this meeting now to public input. Is there anyone here on the meeting this evening that would like to talk Cy, on Sai, if you don't mind, I did have a couple of questions. Okay, sorry about that, Jamie. That's all right. Um, and Andrew, you, we, we've already exchanged some uh, emails about this, but I thought that the percentage increase in square footage of the, of the structure was based on the square footage of the structure prior to zoning, I think it was 1962. Because if I remember correctly, during town meeting, the, the issue was if it could be a percentage of uh, an expanded residence, you could just go in and expand the residence and expand the residence and then take the 30% or 33%. Am I, am I wrong? That date is not in there? So in our, accessory apartment standards for the special permit. There's no such standard for that. We do have a clause in the use table. Let me pull it up. That was modified within the year or two. That was for the conversion of a dwelling. So I don't know if that's what you could be referring to, but we don't have that standard for accessory apartments. And there is a bit about barn carriages and accessory apartments, but it's still different. Okay, so uh, just my other, only other question. Um, so any accessory apartment requires a uh, approval by the ZBA, is that correct? No. Yes. Yes, no. all accessory apartments, just Not, for the use. If I could add a little bit in that, Jamie, if the, house is existing and you're not adding on so in other words if there's a basement that meets all of the criteria because the house is already that 3,000 square feet then by right with approvals by the building official you can get an accessory apartment in that space without having to go before the zoning board so if it's existing space you, you don't need a special permit from the zoning board but anytime there's a uh, new construction to create that accessory apartment, then it requires ZBA approval. Is that, is that correct? I have interpreted it that. I mean, another way to think about this is we could have, and we, we started the process, we could add on, it meets all zoning bylaws, finish that space. Then I could have gone back. It would be more expensive because we now have to undo some of the things that we've finished and asked for a, an accessory apartment because the now, now the space exists. So there is a little bit of feedback in there that one has to think about. Um, I personally, when I advise clients, want this to be open so that the neighbors can see what we're doing and you all have an idea of what's going on in terms of, of, of apartments. But there is a back door, if you, if you will. I mean, I could add a big family room to my house, for example, and not finish the basement, then come back by right and ask the building department to approve a permit to finish that basement into an apartment. So, so there, yeah, there, there, there is a, a loophole in, in the bylaw that could allow what, what, you, just, uh, what you just described. Yeah, and I wouldn't say it's a loophole. I think it's just a matter of interpretation. I mean, I'm sure that when the bylaw was, I don't know, maybe someone who was on the bylaw committee could comment on this, but my assumption is that we're trying to encourage this type of structure happening in this town to help with parents coming and living with their children or vice versa, children coming home from college and needing a place to stay. It's a great way to increase the types of, uh, of residences that we don't have in this community. So I think that was the intent. In fact, that's what the 
bylaw says at the beginning. And, right. and, but there has to be a way to do that equitably. And you know, just because you have a huge house, you shouldn't be allowed to only have the apartment. It should be anyone should be able to have that apartment if they meet certain criteria. And there might be lots in Reading and houses in Reading that can't be expanded. Right, and, and, and you're absolutely correct. When this came before town meeting, that was the intent to allow this exact uh, exact use and also increase uh, a way to increase uh, density of development without, without a lot of new construction. Thank you. Mark, do you have any comment on this subject? I, I raised my hand, but Nancy raised hers first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, no, I was basically going to answer the, the question about the, um, you know, doing an in-law apartment in the, um, the existing residence. But Nancy answered it finally, and that's pretty much all correct. <laughs> okay, good. I did uh, uh, open it up to public comment. Is there anyone on the Zoom, in the Zoom meeting participating tonight who wants to make comment on this case? I can hand off to Steve Lucero, who first had his hand raised. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, I think it looks great. Uh, my only concern would be like the parking. I've lived here for over five years. And uh, I think that the big part of the, the parking uh, availability was they had the garage before. And my concern is, again, it sounds like it was three cars, that's fine, but it doesn't look like it's a lot of parking uh, for multiple uh, family members. Thank you. Any other comments? I'd like to to speak. Um, hi, my name is Mae Moscarello. I live on Woodward Ave, but um, our back door is on Vail. Um, I have the same, hi, Nancy. Hi, hi May. <laughs> I have the same um, issue, actually. I have a few issues. We already know about the sewer line. Um, I know that that's been a great concern for many of us in the neighborhood, making sure that that is not impacted, that goes underneath and out to Vine. And uh, also the car problem, there's a, there's a, this driveway is very narrow. So putting three cars out in the driveway, you know that there's gonna be at least two on the street every day. And um, I'm not in agreement with getting that congestion around that corner. That's a corner. Um, there's a lot of children in that, that ride their bikes. This is a very children friendly neighborhood and it's a very dangerous, uh, can, you know, it's very congested in that corner. Steve, you would agree with me on that, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's my main concern. I mean, I, to be honest, I think it'd be tough to get three cars in there right now, but you could probably do it. And uh, I have two young children. Uh, I'd hate to have a situation where either one of them were, you know, uh, in a bad situation. Yeah. Um, I also have a problem with the whole concept of the ADU. Um, I knew nothing about this being granted in our town of Reading and being passed. Um, to me, it's a it's a fancy name for a two family. And um, many of us are in disagreement with having a two family in our neighborhood. We thought that this um, neighborhood was zoned for single family only. And the fact that they had to build up like we have a we have a quite a large home, but we would never even think about putting uh, an apartment in our in this neighborhood. Um, we would go someplace where there are apartments in neighborhoods. So I'm not in agreement with any of it. And the fact that they added on to get it big enough so that then they could go back and and call it an ADU. Right. Um, they had to put the addition on the house to make it big enough, right, Nancy? Or did Nancy get off? No, I'm I'm here. No, the, the addition on the house is not to make it big enough for the apartment, but to make it large enough for upstairs and right. for their right. entries to come right. in. Them. Yes. What happened? Did his, uh, sharing his sorry, I just wanted to bring up the plot plan for not oh, Nancy okay. to respond. Yeah, um, yeah. You would about parking. One of the things I wanted to point out here, it's hard to see the cars on here, but the driveway has 20 feet across in order to park. So you could park four cars here very easily um, and, and it's widened out. So it, it is in this, this whole area is the driveway. So I just wanted to point that out that it's not a narrow driveway. You can see where it is right now. 
it's been widened to accommodate the four cars. Um, I don't see that happening. <laughs> yeah, I don't. There's no way that that's wrong. I mean, I've lived here for five years. There's no way you could fit four cars here. I need to ask a question. I'm, uh, I'm Pete Moscarello. I'm May's, May's husband. Hello, Nancy. Hi, Pete. So I uh, just want a clarification on, on this. We, we know that addition is for an ADU for, for in-laws. We understand that. But the bylaws allow for the current owner to sell the house, someone else buy and use that ADU as rental property, essentially to family. Okay. Which we're not in agreement with. And Nancy, who knows this na neighborhood? Yeah, I know I do. That, that's a change of that's a change of neighborhood. That's a yeah. real different flavor it's, when you have a two family, yeah. in the midst of this very beautiful residential single family, a single family let, neighborhood. Let me make just a little clarification between two family and and an Nancy, can you apartment. turn up your volume? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll get closer. All right. Is that better? Um, yeah. That. There's one thing about the bylaws that is important to remember with an accessory apartment is that the owner has to occupy the principal dwelling where two family could be rented, both units could be rented and the owner does not have to live there. In an accessory apartment, the owner has to live there. That's part of the bylaws. And it also is, it, it's, I, I, Andrew, do they have to put this into the deed restriction that the owner, I think there's a deed I can't remember what the process is, but I think- Yeah, I'm not sure about that process, but um, yeah, an owner must live on the property, whether it's in the principal or okay, so accessory part, apartment. Andrew, so. Andrew, so part of that process is, thank you for that clarification, Nancy. Um, let's say the current owners sell and a new owner comes in, occupies the main part of the, the house and rents it to non-relative. Do they have to go through a process, an appeal or get permission from the, the zoning board or anyone else to say now this is rental property it's not just in-law property um we would, it would go on an application basis we haven't seen anything like that have come across our desk just yet um the bylaw is fairly new and we are aware of those concerns and it is on our list to try to get in front of that um but with the bylaw being fairly new we're still learning how it's playing out ourselves so uh, does the board members kind of note our our concern, our objection? There, you guys have been around a while. We've been in this town for sixty five years, so yeah, we 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 certainly agree with you, your concerns. Uh, but Nancy, I, th I think it's been perfectly said. If so if somebody wanted to sell the house and and then rent that section, buy the house and rent that section forward, I, my opinion, they would have to come before this board to get that approval. And frankly, I don't think it would happen. I.e., approval. Uh, but that remains to be seen. But I, uh, what they, what they're doing now, is in full compliance with the requirements for an accessory apartment mm -hmm. per the existing bylaws. Now, the, when we went through this thing, when the town meeting went through this this whole bylaw change, they made they added a lot into it relative to accessory apartments. Mm -hmm. And is is the bylaw currently? perfectly written on this subject? Maybe not. Uh, comments like you people make uh, during the course of some of these cases that come before us may well get reflected back in there for future changes. But right now, as the bylaw is written, uh, they are compliant and that's what we're to rule on, okay? But the comments are well taken from all of you and because uh, we certainly understand your concerns. Uh, and uh, so, uh, any other comment here, Mark, or anybody else? I believe Steve has another comment. If we can go back to Steve, if he's still sure. here. Steve, are you referring to me? Yeah. I, I, you do have your hand up as well, and you have had your hand up. So, please I, do. I don't, have any, more, I don't have any more comments. So, great. Okay. Other Steve, sorry, did you have any comments? So, I, so I've lived here for 25 years and I always figured Reading as a you know single family. Um, I was raised here. I've been here since 1970. Um, we bought in this neighborhood knowing it's a single family neighborhood. Um, I totally disagree with this decision. Um, I definitely want some kind of assurance that it won't be a two family after it's all done. So I don't think a ruling should be done until it's confirmed and all a meeting should be held before 
and let us know what the, what it is because this is not an open forum. This is a Zoom video. Um, so I'd like to see something more concrete known by the town lawyers or whatever to, to get this nailed down that if it's a, can be a two family after it's sold. Okay, thank you. I think I lost somebody here. Oh, here I am. Oh, Jerry. I got your back. Okay. Okay, I guess we're all back. Thank so you. For we the do, thank you for the comment. We do understand the concerns. Um, a, spe a special permit can be transferred, and Mark might have some more on this, but those perform the performance standards we're reviewing today must be met for any transference of a special permit as well. So it's always reviewed. Um, so we do try to be as on top of it as we can. Oh, we get notification, like a NOLA meeting before that happens, so we all know what's going on? Um, if they triggered the special permit criteria to come before zoning board again. Um, but again, that's on a, we'd have to see an application for that. Okay, so we'll know, the. How, how are we supposed to know if it can be transferred to a two-family mm. later use on? This cannot become a two-family <laughs> without a variance. A two-family is a different use. The successory okay. apartment has the specific performance standards laid out and uh, maximum, what we'll call maximum square footage of the thousand square feet, so they can't exceed that and become a two-family. We have the performance standards to maintain the one front door, so it appears single-family. Uh, we've worked hard on these, and it's gone fairly well. So, so it's so it is so it is confirmed that it can't be turned into a two-family at this point. That is true. It will remain an accessory apartment. Okay, and so I any agree. I would so agree. Anywhere in Reading, I can buy houses in Reading, move into it, and buy an put an apartment for my daughter in the in there. You meet the. Um, special permit criteria and the accessory apartment criteria, you can. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank I, you. I just want to follow up on, on that, um, the gentleman's point, That's the, Steve's point. Um, when we, we say two family, um, in your, as opposed to the owner lives there and rents out the apartment to a family or non-family member, that is not considered two, a two family. That's, that's, I want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. So Andrew, um, new family buys a house, lives in the main park, rents the uh, ADU to stranger. Is that a two family or is that still an ADU situation? Um, I would have to, again, probably defer until that happens because if they are still meeting the criteria, there's really, nothing we can do but if they had if they were changed it's not a two family i just want to stress that is that a two family is a different use it's a different structure than an accessory apartment it has built different standards code standards building standards zoning standards so um i can assure you it won't become a two family can i assure you they can't rent it out as an um accessory apartment or an airbnb i cannot um give that assurance at this moment so. yeah that stinks that stinks. Yeah. so they can rent it out have an airbnb someone else can buy the property and then they can mm -hmm. do an airbnb with the downstairs and you don't know from one week to the next who's coming in and out of there i agree and we have taken these comments at a lot of hearings and we are definitely trying to be on top of that as yeah. well as we can it's so. too bad you passed this law as what I'm saying. Um, I'm meeting. So one more time, Andrew, if a, if a new owner comes in and lives in the main house and rents the, 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 the unit, do they have to get permits, permission, all that through the ZBA or you say, mm -hmm. no, it's already com in compliance so just yeah. as it is, is now. Mm -hmm. and you know, my comment on that, um, sir, is that if someone buys a house and then rents it out to someone else, that makes it a two-family residence. Okay. Now, that means they have to come before this board for approval to do that. Now, we all know we live in a world where people do things behind the scenes. 
Right. And that's entirely possible. I understand that. But there, you know, who's the best policeman on the block? Yeah, but we don't want to be the police. To bring that to the attention. No, but you would. If you saw that happening, you'd bring it to the attention of the town, would you not? So I would just like to bring this discussion back to the specific application before us. If we would like to discuss these accessory apartment zoning bylaw, we can do so at a different meeting and put it as a topic or talk to you offline. Um, but I just want to get back to the application in front of us, if that's okay. Right. Is there any other comment from yeah. Kathy one. has her hand up. Kathy's yeah, fired. Sorry. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Can I just have your name and address, please? It's Kathy Dunn, 17 Vale Road. Gotcha. Thank you, Kathy. Hi. So, um, Nancy, I think what you, what, did you say that the utilities, they don't have their own separate utilities? That's correct. This apartment is off of the uh, main house's utilities. That's one of the requirements for an accessory apartment. So there isn't... Okay, so if somebody water. tried to rent it to somebody that doesn't live in the house, basically, they would have to share the utilities. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank and you. That's part, and that's part of the accessory bylaw. It has to be the same utilities. It can't. Okay. A separate meter in so that would make it a two family. Okay, and then just one other question. Sorry, um, to to even have a ADU, you have to start with three thousand square feet, or do you have to have a certain amount of rooms, livable space? There's there's two distinctions in in an ADU. You need a minimum of three thousand square feet in order to be able to. Well, that's not true. I'm sorry. Not true. Yeah. Uh, right. That's not true. Yeah, for a maximum size apartment. Uh, it has to be one third of the existing square footage. So if you had a house that was less than 3,000 square feet, the apartment would then be smaller than the thousand square feet, but still be able to be an apartment, in other words. Right. So, right. but to maximize the square footage for a, an apartment, you can imagine if you had a, a small house, you could have a small apartment, but that apartment would be just a single room. And that's okay. certainly doable. Um, okay. The number of rooms comes into play. If you have an older house, I've forgotten what the age of the house is, and it has more than, I think it's eight rooms, that's the two-family bylaw that allows you to okay. make a two-family out of one of the older houses. Okay. All right. I, I thought I saw something about number of rooms or square feet when I was looking at the bylaw. So it's basically something we passed and running in 2015 that allows any house to attempt <laughs> to do an ADU if if you can fit it in. So That's thank correct. you for answering my questions. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy. Andrew. Thank you, Nancy. Any other questions? I have one. Public? Hello. You doing it right? There you have. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Okay. Am I not on here? Uh, oh, we can hear you, but your your face isn't on. Oh, okay. All right, Andrew. Um, yes. I have a question for you. It's, my name's Chris Cody. I live at um, 16 Bear Road. Yep. Um, again, I just want to clarify. So there's no real guarantee that an accessory apartment, right now they meet the bylaw, so therefore it exists. But there's no guarantee that once somebody moves out of that apartment, as long as the um, owner and say it's a new owner, will live to the apartment that anybody, they could they could essentially rent that apartment to anybody without anybody knowing about it except for us. Um, and then we I, would trigger that by going to the town again. So somebody would know whether it's an assessing, planning, building, uh, somebody would know. So um, we would take it up then and what courts of action would follow suit. Okay. How would you know that somebody would like sell the house, buy the house, and then rent to Joe Schmo the Ragman? I don't know. There is no real distinction between, like I said earlier, I can't really guarantee that there's... Right. Um, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. Okay. When this, excuse me, I'm, my name is Peter Ferry. I'm, I'm Christine's uh, husband. We live on Vail Road as well. When this project first came to us, it came to us as an in-law apartment, and we were all for it. 
you know, as an it is. we thought that was a great thing, you know, that, that, but it doesn't sound like it's, like it's an immoral pot right now. It sounds like it's a, it's a potential, I mean, there's no question it's going to increase the value of the, of the house. And there's no question when the time comes when these folks sell it, they're going to be showing it as an opportunity for a revenue. I mean, there's no question about that. Right. I can only add that it's not a two family. It's a distinct difference in the town of Reading bylaws. That's too bad. Really. Because it really is. As um, Cy, if someone rents the apartment, you're considering because they're making money from it that it's a two family. Even though it's considered an accessory apartment because it fits the bylaws once the spouse is 15. So we should. Sorry, I can't hear you. So we missed our opportunities when we did the definition of what an ancillary apartment is. What you're saying. So yes, for Not anything to, to change with the performance standards of accessory apartments, it would have to be going through town meeting as a zoning change. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And so lastly, this. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I Is didn't raise my hand. Comment? Oh, go ahead, Peter. Oh, it might. So, it might. My only other, my only other question is: This house started out as three thousand square feet. Is that correct, Nancy? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. No, the house did not start out as three thousand when we had the entire addition completed it is it was, over three thousand so it was just so under, it was like 2800 but they wanted oh, to add more square footage to the second floor which also helped us add more square footage to the to the lower level so so you took the existing house you made it bigger divided it you took 33 percent of that and made uh, a, an apartment that was yeah. how many bedrooms is this apartment one Okay, okay. But the existing structure was not big enough for you to create the apartment that, that you it, thought was feasible, right? Uh, uh, well, yeah, well, it has enough space to put an apartment in the basement, but it has to do a lot with how you get into the main house and how we get into what would be an apartment and how we get out of the main house. Because it's a raised ranch, the access to this lower level is their entrance and their exit. So in doing the apartment, uh, we could have taken over the garage, I suppose, and the bathroom, but it isn't big enough to put in then enough ancillary spaces to make it into a livable apartment. They also wouldn't have been able to expand their second floor to gain a master bedroom bathroom, uh, which is part of the criteria. So. So in all of these projects, you have to look at the entire picture. It worked out for their advantage. Also from a, um, a cost perspective, it worked out in their advantage to take over a portion of the first floor or the lower level and then add on a smaller addition that could become part of the apartment and allow them to expand their living space on the second floor. So from a confluence of, of all, it, it made a lot of sense from a cost perspective, budget perspective, and a square footage. <coughs> so um, it's just a combination of all of that. I don't think that they intended when they first started out, actually, I know they didn't to add on, uh, but in doing the analysis of what it was that were their goals, it made more sense to build an addition than it did to try and recreate stairs and egresses for the second floor to be able to accomplish an apartment on the first floor. May I ask you, how much of that addition space was used for this apartment? For the apartment, um, I'd have to do the math, but at 11 by 32 feet is the um, roughly plus a little bit more that as it expands. No, 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 that's not, that wasn't my question. So oh, I'm sorry. I know the addition, but how much of the addition is used for the apartment? Uh, how much of the addition is used for the apartment? It's just the lower level, and that's 11 by 32, roughly, of the addition portion. Are you talking about the main house? How much of the existing house was used for the addition? No, no. I, I mean, I understand that we're using 30% of the, well, 
the, whatever the existing house is, they have to put the addition on it, right? Right, right, exactly. We made the house bigger, and then we took 30% of it, and we put we made it an ancillary property, right? That's correct. So now let's just keep, bear in mind, I have no issues with an in-law property at all. I think that's a great thing. But I do have issues with an ancillary property. I do. Also, in, and this is this is something that the town's going to have to think about. Everybody, guys, there's only one drain for this whole that whole side of the street, and it's right in front of that driveway. So that's not that I don't think I don't know if that'd be a problem for parking or not, but there's only one drain in it, and this whole side, this whole street on this side. Yeah, it's not that there are. Now, maybe, maybe none of this has anything to do with what we're talking about right now. I think the issue of the day is what happens when these good people move and sell their house. That's the question that we have. Mm -hmm. And, it and is I well think it's, it should be answered not just for the, our folks here in Vail Road, but it should be answered for, for everybody. You know, what is an ancillary apartment? When you say an in-law apartment, where everybody thinks that's a good thing. In-law, what does it you know? What does that mean? It means you know you're going to take care of your parents. It's great, but when when you say an ancillary apartment, well, what's what's that? I mean, that's a, an ancillary apartment by definition is a is a, is a space that that you rent, right? I mean, I know I have many rental apartments. It's a rental apartment, right? You rent them. So, if we can't be protected in this in, a, in this conversation, then we're going to have to be. I think I would hope that we would have to at least have some dialogue going forward as to what we're going to do. You know how we're going to handle this. So, if I can just go to Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds, who have had their hands up. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for acknowledging us. I appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate my neighbors uh, giving their, uh, not necessarily grievances, but uh, opinions. And uh, um, I agree with most of what uh, they have said. Um, I have three or four things to add if I can remember them all. Um, uh, one of the things I want to discuss is, um, ironically, yesterday, they were doing some work on that, that uh, sewer line, that easement that runs from Vail to Vine mm -hmm. Street yesterday. And several of us had... Um, some, I don't, I don't want to say backup in our sewer, but we had back pressure in our sewer that we were, it was actually noticeable on our toilets. So that, that is an issue going down the line. I realize there's at least three of us that have, a, have an easement on that um, sewer line. So, I mean, that is something that I know um, we have flooding that goes on in this area, especially and uh, I'm, surprised, I'm surprised Charles and Margaret on online because they were very adamant about the flooding that is in that driveway that uh, they're talking about um, can fit three cars. I've never seen more than two cars in that driveway, um, much less four. And I understand um, the Moscarello's point about that being a bad corner because there are a lot of kids. Like kids come down that street from Vail, from Woodward, and on their scooters, on their bikes, and they take the corner and it's... Uh, you know, if that gets any more narrow, there's going to be problems. Um, <clears throat> as far as the the difference between the existing house and the new addition, um, <laughs> I, I know we I, most of us that have done additions have used Nancy, so we're all familiar with Nancy. She does great work, and she's uh, sharp as a tack. So, um, but the basement is a living space in that house, other than the garage. The garage is the basement or part of the basement, which is, you know, what, nine by 11 or whatever the, 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 the depth of the basement is. Um, my basement isn't considered a living space. Um, if I sell my house by square foot, it does not include the basement. Um, so to include that, and I know that was kind of a, um, not necessarily a throw in, but yeah, if we went and put, you know, a couple thousand dollars into the, into the garage, made it, a living space, then you would have been able to move forward and do everything. And I think, um, you know, that might have been a little bit shady, not shady, that's terrible, that's a bad sign, but a shortcut um, is a better term. Um, and for all intents and purposes, that addition is almost done. 
I mean, they're already plastering. I don't know. I haven't been in the house, but I, you know, we're right here. We've seen all the work. It's been going on for three months now. Um, and, you know, if there's an area in, on the second floor that's not finished because that's a technicality, um, it's pretty close to being finished, um, I think, from what I could see with the plasters and everything. Um, so I, I'm just kind of curious on, as, as, far, as far as the being able to go from the, the required space to the, um, the actual space that they have now that's considered the ADU. And I also think that's kind of a shortcut is, why don't we call it an in-law apartment? Why is it gonna be ADU? It, like the, somebody else just said, if it was called an in-law apartment, there's not a person that would have a complaint about this. The issue is if the house gets sold and another tenant goes in there, it's gonna be turned into an apartment. That's what everybody has an issue with. It's not zoned and it's that. not zoned for that. And I know Sai had said, it would have to go in front of the board. It would have to be voted on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But whether it's a, a, a zoning change or um, some other change, you've made at least two changes in the last year to make this possible, not necessarily for our new neighbors, but for other people in general. So in another year or two, there's, no, there's nothing to say that's not going to happen anyway. So that's, that's my concern. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> Are there any other comments from the public? Andrew, I don't see any, ra I can't see the hands raised, Ron. Um, Steve. There, there are Steve, a couple hands raised, I believe. Yeah, Andrew. Steve Key has had his hand raised as well as Kathy. Well, I just want to re-add that, you know, I don't like the idea of adding space on and the meeting wasn't held before they were given approval to put that on. I know it's an old loophole um, to get that project going quicker. And I know the board's all looking at it saying it all fits criteria, but you're taking a neighborhood that a house that existed and you're just giving permission to do this across the whole town that anybody's gonna be able to do this now. I can go to any neighborhood, buy another house and do this. And I just, I think for Reading, I think that's a terrible idea. Um, so again, I just don't approve of this. I don't like the idea. And I think it's kind of a backdoor uh, way to play this and uh, kind of ruins our neighborhood, and I just don't like it. Thank you. Thank you. Any others, Andrew? Oh, Kathy, did you have any additional comments? None. None. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can go back to the board, and I would like to stress again that per town hall, um, they have recommended that we continue these hearings, at least another hearing, in case there is anyone who has not joined or has had technical difficulties. And it's our first meeting back in two or three months. So um, just want to stress that that has been relayed from town hall. Okay. Yeah. I certainly understand the comments that many of the folks uh, in the neighborhood made. And uh, I can... Uh, feel their anger and concerns, but we are dealing with the bylaws as they exist today, which draws a clear distinction between accessory apartments and two families. And uh, maybe there needs to be forward discussion uh, uh, with inputs from people like this uh, to, to the town that could be factored into the discussion for future town meeting. But right now we are dealing with the accessory apartments as they are defined in the bylaws today. But I will go back to, I'll close the portion of the uh, meeting to the public and I'll go back to the board. Is there any comments from anyone on the board or Mark, do you have any comments relative to all this stuff before I go to the board members? Um, I'd have, I'd have a lot to say, but um, the can of worms is kind of open and closed and um, I have no more comments at this time. Thank you. Any comments from the board members? No further comments. Uh, Bob, none. Anybody none. else? I just had a, a question for Andrew. I'm not sure I understood what you said about continuing the meeting. So town council has advised that all committees continue meetings that are held on Zoom. No, um, we in the planning. No. Oh. We in the planning department have felt that each public hearing should go twice, um, have two hearings. So be continued at least one more date so that 
we have a chance to digest all the comments and make sure everybody has an equal opportunity to provide comments. Um, notice was sent last week, but that doesn't mean that everybody got it or has access to this. So we just want to continue to make sure we're allowing for all the comments that we can. Okay, so it would just be extended one more time. Right, correct. And, and is that is it your anticipation that as long as we meet on Zoom, if it's six months, that that policy will remain effective? Um, it's tough to say. I would think for now, yes. For in the short term future, yes. Um, if this becomes a bit more of the norm, then we will rediscuss. Um, but as for now, yes. And just, uh, um, just out of curiosity, are other boards and commissions following that same policy? Uh, CPDC has been avoiding large-scale public hearing discussions and asking applicants to continue. We've been doing some small applications, sign applications and stuff, but even that only just got underway last month. So um, we're all on the learning curve here. So still a work in progress. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. We're all learning this Zoom procedure and how it affects <laughs> how it's done. Uh, but anyway, is there any additional comments at this point from Nancy any other has group? one. If, if I could just talk a little bit about continuing this one more time. We have been waiting since March. Yes. Yep. So Understood. another continuance. I don't know when the next Zoom meeting will be scheduled, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know what else we can bring to this meeting to make it continued. So I'm a little, I'm a little upset that that might be a consideration. It, we've you. waited a very long time already, and, I, and it's, it's been a bit frustrating for that reason. Thank you. I do understand, and we just ask that all applicants try to bear with us as we get our feet on the ground and get these public hearings started back up again in a fair and just way. Will we be meeting on the on the seventeenth? We would, um, as long as everyone's available. That was my recommendation that we would continue to the seventeenth. Okay. Is there any other comment from the board members? I heard from Bob. I, I, just to follow up on that, so we would anticipate voting and approving or not approving on the 17th. I mean, I know that correct. could change, but that is the anticipation, correct? That is the anticipation. Eric, Hillary, Nick, any comment? The only thing I can think of is, you know, I, I totally appreciate, you know, what Nick and you know, the town is saying about, you know, the notice and, um, you know, participation. But if the applicant wants us to vote, I think we have an obligation to put it to a vote. And obviously it's up to them if there's some sort of procedural challenge with it afterwards. But if they ask us to vote, I think we should vote. Anybody else have any comment? I, I would agree with Eric on that, uh, Cy. Yeah, I mean, if we had a, it's very clear, I think, from my listening to the comments of the board, that there's no problem with acting on this case this evening. Uh, and, I, and I respect uh, the comments of Nancy in that people have been waiting for a long time to get these cases reviewed. Uh, if it's a controversial case where there's some serious issues that command a continuance, I can understand that. But I don't get the sense that this case falls into that category based on the listening to the discussion this evening. And I tend to endorse uh, and agree with the comments that we should, I see no reason why we can't act on this case this evening. Andrew, 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 a question for you, if I could, Mr. Chairman. Um, has has it been made public that the meetings will be continued at least twice when they're on Zoom? I mean, is that understood by the, the citizenry in Reading? If so, then I think we should adhere to that. 
about that wasn't expressed in the legal in the courtesy notice that we sent last week to abutters reminding them and notifying them that the hearing was now going to open tonight um but it was just something that we as staff discussed and thought of to try to ensure we got as much comment as possible you know not... andrew you know andrew that there are three other cases hanging in the wings right now i do know correct that. and if we continue these two cases we'll be dealing with five cases on the next meeting is that true correct sorry what was the question we'll be if we continue these this meeting and the one following tonight to the next meeting which right now appears to be june 17th we could be uh -huh. acting and dealing with five cases there are no cases scheduled for the 17th yet they haven't there been are. legal advertised they haven't been legal advertised um it was uh, my intent to discuss with you tonight okay. on hearing those in July, but I don't want to. Okay, so those are pending cases that haven't materialized yet. Correct. Okay, so we would be, so what's, from the town's viewpoint, is the policy right now, if the town wants us to continue these, is that the right, is that the rule? That is the town's recommendation. Um, it's not a mandated policy. It's not official documentation. It's just our recommendation if you guys truly want to vote tonight um i do believe as stated it is your right so okay does anybody on the board feel that we should not act tonight anybody anybody any raised hands any comment i just want to go to mr and mrs reynolds and then steve key again okay Thank you, uh, Andrew and Sai, for acknowledge, uh, uh, acknowledging me. Um, you've said on four occasions that uh, you were going to allow people that maybe had trouble on Zoom tonight, people that had that maybe a difficult time tonight to be able to participate in this, this meeting. Um, Margaret and um, Charles, who are in a butter, who have had concerns, <clears throat> apparently they haven't been able to attend this tonight. Um, I think that uh, in fairness to the neighbors, uh, this project has gone through. It's 99% or 95% already under construction. It's not like they had to wait for their permit. It's only two more weeks. Um, I, don't, I don't understand the rush. I understand you're trying to do right by the, the, uh, the homeowner, but um, there's other people involved as well. And I don't know why, what's the rush to, to rush it through tonight? You have two more weeks and you just said, Andrew just said you have nothing on the docket for the 17th. So this could be the very first thing on the 17th. There is a comment in the chat section from a Charles. I don't know if you see that, Nancy, if you want to try to address it. Uh, let's see. I don't see it. Said, I thought accessory units could only be added when the addition wasn't being added on the front of the building, though it could be added on the side or rear of the building. No, um, entrance, entry-wise, side or rear, but. Ent Entries-wise. If I could just also make a comment on mm -hmm. why we're hoping to get it done tonight. There, if, you know, obviously we are not ordering the kitchen, we're not ordering the, the pieces that make this into an accessory apartment because we don't have permission to do that. So if we are delayed two weeks, that means that those cabinets that have a 10 week lead time cannot be ordered. So we're pushing this project even further into the summer and they would like to be able to take occupancy of this, including the in-laws this summer. So that's that's the delay. We, we had to start the project so that we could at least get this done so that they could move in. And now we're at that critical junction where if they can't order the cabinets and they can't order the features that go into this apartment, then it's another two week delay before they can get in. So that's the thought. That's, that's why I'm pushing a little bit. And, but you have the decision. <laughs> Okay. I am still in favor of moving forward on the decision this evening. I believe we have one more comment. Sorry if we can address Steve okay. quickly. So I agree also that, you know, this is not a public forum. This is Zoom. This is not accessible to everybody. There are older people in the neighborhood that don't have computers. They've owned the house since November. They didn't file for it until March. 
so they couldn't have been that much of a rush. So I think they should be held for the two weeks, like Jim was saying. Um, for the town making a recommendation that it's not an open forum, I don't even know if this is actual legal forum for the town of Reading. Um, it's not a public forum. Not everyone's welcome because not everybody has computers. Some people don't have internet. So, you know, I basically look at you guys are just going to railroad it right through and not no. give them no. an answer. No, no, no. no. We so could wait they, until we have a public forum in the town hall. We could probably be reviewing this thing next September. Well, that's kind of ridiculous. Huh? That's kind of ridiculous. Well, it is kind of ridiculous. It is. But right, people so. did have the opportunity to join in this evening. Now, granted. But not, so everyone has a computer and everyone has internet. Well, I will add that this was received in January and notified before the whole work from home order right. happened. This, this, this is not a public forum. This is Zoom. So there have been measures made to allow for this through the current. And on what, laws. on who's, who, who decided this? Governors, Baker. That that's not our town. That's, that's being ruled by a governor. We're our own community. That's why we have a select board. Town meeting, town meeting should vote on it. It's not a it's not a true forum. This is not a town forum. So thank you, anyways. Duly noted. Nick? Mm. Uh, I just want to say I'm in favor of voting this tonight. I don't see any reason why we need to delay this two more weeks. Um, my understanding is this meets the open meeting law. It was advertised. Mm -hmm. If someone wants to submit a comment, all the avenues still exist. They could submit an email, they could write a letter. There's plenty of ways to submit public comment. Um, most people, granted there are exceptions, have access to the internet, but I don't, I'm not aware of any memos, letters, or whatever of anyone voicing their concern that they weren't able to make this meeting tonight. So I, I would, I'm in favor of moving forward, and particularly this seems like a pretty straightforward uh, accessory apartment application that does meet all the performance standards. And while I do understand the public's concern that this can become a two-family, for those who are, who are generally concerned, I would really recommend that they read the uh, zoning regulations. There's about a dozen standards that talk about how this is really not a two-family, from the size limited to 1,000 feet, limited to three people, maintaining the appearance of a single family. The application does not automatically transfer to the next owner. They still need permission. This is in here for good reasons. And while there are concerns that there may be a few bad apples that try to abuse it, I'm not concerned about that because there is recourse to address that. I'm worried about this application and there is a public forum and this can be discussed in other avenues, but I don't see any for, any issues with this or moving forward on voting on this tonight. That's all I gotta say. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone on the board that thinks we should continue this? To the next meeting. Anyone? Then I will entertain a motion on this petition. Bob, you haven't done one for a while. I will be happy to uh, make a motion that uh, we approve, that the board approve uh, case number, if I can read it here in my light, uh, 20-03 uh, uh, for a uh, approval of a special permit for an accessory apartment. Okay. Do we have a second? I can second that. Thank you. I have a second from Nick. And I, if I can just ask that you do a roll call vote, so just ask each member individually right. on the vote. Uh, Mr. Redford? Yes I or vote, no? I vote yeah, yes. Nick? I vote yes. Hillary? Yes. Please ask Eric as a Eric? formal member. Yes. Yes. And yeah. myself? Yes. So it's 500. Zero, zero. It is approved. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, Andrew, will you have a stamped version of the drawings that 
we will have. I know that we usually <laughs> do that. So. so we might have to go through a mailing process. Um, perhaps you and I should connect tomorrow or early next week, Nancy, to review that process. Sounds good. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ms. May, did you have a comment? Sorry, guys. Um, I don't know if it's too late to take Miss May's comment. Go ahead. Yeah, we just want to make sure that you read our uh, just let's our put chat it to, the, to everybody. Let's put it um, record. I, I think it sort of encapsulates what the neighbors are, are feeling. We understand the board's concern tonight was approving and not approving project as, as it stands, and you just did. Um, and although we have some concerns like sewer and parking and things that were brought up tonight, I think the neighbor's big concern is what happens from here. And I know you answered that question, and I know you talked about two family versus rental property and, and all that. But what, no, we're really concerned that we all bought into this neighborhood um, for into this town, into this town, this neighborhood for a reason. And this looks like potential for substantive changes in the whole flow, the whole feel, the whole flavor of this beautiful residential neighborhood and I mean okay. the neighbors have brought that up consistently and we just need some type of assurance that um, new owner can't come in rental property change the whole thing we need some type of assurance for the board that there's going to be a process where any new owner has to jump through a lot of hoops and neighbors got to have a lot of input before um, you allow this bail so, so any new owner, owner will have to meet the same performance standards as the existing Thank you for your comment. All right. Okay. Bye. Right. Thanks for moving it. Thank yeah. you, everyone. All right. We have one more case. That's it. On the board's agenda tonight. It's number court case 20-03, 19 Auburn Street. I'll read the legal notice. Zoning Board of Appeals will open a public hearing for remote and online measures on Wednesday, June 3rd at 8 p.m. Sorry, we're late. On the application of Jeffrey and Kristen Aborn, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Paragraph or Section 10, for a variance under Reading Zoning Bylaw, Sections 4, 5, 2, and 7, 4, as may be determined by the Zoning Board to construct a new farmer's porch on a non conforming front yard setback on the property located on 19 Aborn Street in Reading. Unless there's an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the butters list, except to say that the butters were notified, as were the select board, town clerk, police department, fire department, building department, conservation commission, health department, assessor's office, engineering division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North, Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. As to vote given before this board is taken on the road. So if anyone here on the Zoom meeting this evening would like to speak on this case, uh, please stand or please raise your right hand, I guess, and take, make the following statement. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the answer is I do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> Okay, uh, I assume you're Kristen and uh, Jeffrey? Yeah. All right. Then we will uh, turn the uh, meeting over to you at this time to uh, have you tell us what you want to do here, okay? Yes. So I have your application open and I can share the screen if you so wish. Okay. Yeah, okay. You, are, you are asking for a variance, which is, which is a very, very difficult approval to get. So in the course of your discussion and presentation, uh, if we'd kindly address the four criteria as well for a variance, okay? Okay. Yep. Thank you. So we right now have a structure in the front. The stairs are falling apart. Um, it needs to be replaced. And since we moved in 12 years ago, we've just wanted to put some sort of structure on the front. And both of us grew up with front porches. You know, it's just kind of a thing that we think we would enjoy, our children would enjoy, our neighbors. Um, I think it'll add value to the house. Um, with everything going on, we've been, you know, outside more and neighbors walking by and, you know, just talking more and meeting more neighbors. And I just feel like it, 
you know, would be a great thing to have to sit out, like I said, with neighbors and adding value because the existing structure has to come down and this is what we've been waiting to do. The problem is, is the setback. So we're looking for four feet from the town um, to put the structure on. <clears throat> could, you, could you address the four criteria, please? Um, I think no. okay. I think, I think uh, Andrew's got it on the screen. Adding. So by adding a farmer's porch to the front of the house will have no impact on soil conditions or topography of land. Physical location of original structure is already at 20 feet from front landline. We would like our farmer's porch on the front of the house. No other alternate alternative to build farmer's porch on the side of the house. The farmer's porch will also protect front foundation from heavy rain seeping into the basement and ice buildup on the front walkway. The farmer's porch will add character and curb appeal to both the house and the neighborhood. The farmer's porch will not be substantial substantially different to public neighborhoods front porches. We're seeking four feet relief from front setback. Okay. Uh, Mark, do you have any comment to start this session? I would, I wanna hold my comment, but with your, with your approval, Mr. Chairman, I would like for the board to come back to me before they vote, please. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll start with Eric. All right, well, it's a variance. So it's more difficult to get than a special permit, uh, which is what the prior, or the prior applicants were looking for. Uh, with a variance, you need to get all four of the criteria that you filled out with the variance criteria. And almost always, that first criteria is the tripping block for everyone looking for a variance. Because what it asks is to describe the circumstances relating to the soil condition or topography, which especially affect the land but do not generally affect the land around that. So I guess what we have to figure out is what is, apart from the fact that you are already at the, uh, the setback from the street, what other dimensions of the, the land, the topography uh, would, you know, allow like a, a deviation from the zoning? Because, you know, usually kind of like the classic example is if you have a giant rock or ledge that like will restrict where you can actually build on the property. And, you know, the fact that the building envelope of the existing property is right there at the uh, front yard setback, at least to my mind, doesn't necessarily, um, you know, I guess meet that criteria. Not that I'm saying it couldn't. I mean, we could certainly discuss it more, but just the way that you framed it here. And then also how not obtaining it would substantially impact you um, financially or otherwise. Those are always, you know, like I said, the, the two hardest ones. And, you know, it's always, um, you know, it's always problematic for me as a board owner to tell somebody that no, it's your property, but no, you can't do that. But the zoning bylaws have these performance standards that set what people can and can't do. And to get some sort of relief from them, to get an exception to the rule, um, like I said, all four of these need to be met. So since I am only a board member and not an advocate uh, one way or the other, I'll just point out those are two potential issues that I see with the project right now. But I'm not saying yes or no right now. I'm just pointing out I haven't I haven't made up my mind on those first two yet. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, Can I, thank you. Yes, go ahead. You don't mind if I just have one question. On the sure. uh, the sections of the setbacks, um, 
and the side setbacks in in our district is 15 and i believe the back uh setback is 15. why is the front setback 20 feet from um the property line um i walk around the my neighborhood um a lot i have two dogs and we walk a lot and i see hundreds of houses in reading that don't even come close to being set back 20 feet and i know you know those houses were built years ago or whatever but it's not like i am putting it a, you know something that's going to be an eyesore uh for the neighborhood or something i'm trying to do a little curb appeal i'm yeah. only asking for four feet um as to go to like top topography on the land and um, I don't know if there's any ledge under there that I that I cannot build because I can't start digging until I get a, bar a permit from you folks. Um, the other thing is I'm, I'm asking for a front porch. Can I put the front porch on the side of my house? That wouldn't be a front farmer's porch. Is there any give back to those questions? Uh, so 20 feet seems to be the normal front setback in most zones um, besides business A in the A80 district. Like mm -hmm. you said, there's a whole bunch of legal non-conforming structures that could have been built prior to whenever that zoning was written. Um, the reasons for 20 feet, I don't know what safety concerns and thoughts went into that years and years and years ago, um, but that's just the way the bylaw is and any new development has to meet that um, or whatever zone bylaw setbacks there are in their zone okay there may, be, there may be a lot of properties in this town that were built years and years ago when the bio on very small lots where they don't meet the current setbacks for sure. i mean the current bylaw setbacks because those have changed uh, over the years and so in that case, most of those properties are, they're considered grandfathered, mm -hmm. okay? But when you want to make some changes to those properties, unfortunately, you're stuck with being evaluated on those changes versus the current bylaws. Right, yeah. Right. Which is, no, we understand. Okay? We understand. But that's the way it is. Now, my understanding, well, I'll, I'll go back to the other board members for comment, and I'll save mine for the, at the end. Okay. Uh, Nick, do you have any comment? Yeah, I just, um, I'll, I really echo a lot what um, Eric said about um, the ledge example. I mean, I, I, I don't think personally, um, maybe you didn't quite understand the first criteria, but it's, it's not so much what your project is going to have an impact on the soil. It's more of how the topography affects your decision to place what you placed, where you placed it. Um, and I think Eric also said pretty well, I mean, the ZBA, we're not a monolith on the zoning regulations. We, we just enforce it. And while I personally, I don't see any particular problem with what you're trying to do, um, we are tasked and sometimes put in an uncomfortable position to, to enforce uh, the zoning regs that the town, that the residents have created and decided as a community, these are the standards they want to see in their town. Um, and I think Eric also mentioned, you have to meet all four. Three out of four isn't going to cut it. Um, so, so right now, unless I can hear something further from the applicant about the unique topography where that farmer's porch is, um, I don't think, from what I hear right now, that the first criteria is met. Um, that's all I have to add. Okay. Jamie, comment? Actually, I, I have a, a question first. I couldn't quite tell from the drawing. Is the facade of the house exactly 20 feet from the street? And if the answer to that question is yes, how far from the street are the current steps? I think there are two steps or, or, or three. So the so the step comes out and then it goes down, right? Progressively down, and where the bottom step. So it's it's a structure um, of brick stairs and um, railroad, ties. railroad ties. So where that comes out is where the feet. step is six 
its feet. And that's where the steps for the porch will end, is where the steps for this structure end. I know it's not grandfathered in and it's not a structure, but we're not going out any further than where the actual stairs end right now. Um, Andrew, can you pull up that drawing? Yep, the plot plan. Sorry, it's not. So the, the plot plan um, that they had done by Mr. Farrell um, on the on the front of the house, it's not that's showing what we'd like to do. Um, right. It doesn't show the existing stairs that we have on the house uh, because there's there's no uh, I don't know why he didn't put them in, but I think because he we're doing this as a proposal front porch. Um, the stairs they basically come out of the main entrance of the uh, of the house. Um, there are four steps going down, and they come out exactly six feet. Um, I don't want to go any further than that because I actually like the distance that we have. Um, so, so the, so the farmer's out. porch would come out to exactly where the existing steps stop, correct? Exactly, yes. correct. Yep, we're not going any further than that. So what you're really looking at is just making it the entire frontage of the house. Correct. Yes. Um, so those existing steps are, are don't meet the setback requirement. Correct. Correct. But they were here when we when we purchased the house. Right. Right. So you could rebuild those steps in the existing footprint, obviously. The steps, yes. Yes. But can I go 30 feet, 34 feet across? Right. And put a roof and on put it. And put a roof on it. The steps don't have a roof on it now, do they? No, no they no. do not. You, I think, uh, Andrew or, 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 or Mark, um, could they put a roof over those steps now without a variance since the footprint is already there? I will defer to Mark as he has his hand raised. So steps don't count towards setbacks. Once oh, you put don't. a roof over them, they're considered a structure. Okay. Right, so then they must comply to the setback. But okay. Steps so steps themselves can be in the setbacks. So, okay. Thank you. Um, the, the other just observation I did drive by and take a look and is I didn't measure, but as far as I could tell, every other house on that street meets or seems to meet or exceed that 20 foot setback. I didn't see any that were within that setback zone, just as an observation. Do you know that, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Aborn, do you know whether any of those on the street uh, look like yours? In terms um, of did we have three houses. We have our house and the two houses going down towards Bancroft. They were all built in 1982. Uh, they're all basically the same house. Um, I think we all have the same frontage. Um, actually, I think even going up the whole side of Auburn Street, I think everybody has basically the same frontage. The houses are all basically in a line yeah that that's what it looked like to me correct so <laughs> if, if we if you put in the the farmer's porch it would it, it would be different and then um everybody else would would uh would would uh perhaps or, or many other people would perhaps want the same thing well, I, I know a couple of the houses going up already have porches that are, you know, they're either covered porches or they're actually on the house already. Uh, there are a couple of houses that do have staircases with uh, small roofs uh, over the, just the, the landing um, going up the street. So was, is that considered the same thing? Is that if they don't have a setback, but they still have uh, that roof over it, even though it's only like a, say a four foot pad coming out of their house with a roof, is that still considered a structure? I think the I answer to that is awning, right? 
well, I don't think it would be an awning because an awning is usually fabric where these are made out of, you know, either wood or some type of building material, mm -hmm. then is that considered a roof structure? If it is, we have to assume that it meets the setback because I don't think a variance was issued. Either I, I don't know that, but I non-conforming. There's many options that it could or could not be set. Mm -hmm. I think he said it was new construction, but I'm oh. I misunderstood. Sorry. I mean, at this point, we realize that we're in front of you because there are rules and there are, um, it's, you know, it's just something that we both grew up with. It's something that, you know, unfortunately- We want to enjoy. Yeah, I just want to enjoy sitting outside, seeing my neighbors. Um, I feel like a lot of the houses built right now are built as cookie cutters. They don't have any character to them. They don't have, you know, Almost none of them have front porches. People aren't doing front porches anymore. Everybody wants it to look new and square and the best space they can get, I guess. Um, so it, it's just something we we wanted to, you know, put on and for our kids to enjoy and, and you know, make the house look better, make the neighborhood look better and be able to sit out there and enjoy, you know, what's out there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hillary? Hi. So um, I, my husband and I walked past here a couple times in the last week. And um, I do notice how on your, is it the second um, criteria where you're talking about there's some water infiltration and that your, your front, um, I can see how the water because it's on a downhill slope that the water can kind of run down this street. Which street is it? Parkview? Uh, uh, we're in Auburn. Oh, right, from Parkview? From Parkview, straight directly toward your house. Correct. Yes. yes. And I see how that and how your roof runoff would come back. It doesn't drain away from the house, but it could come straight off and back into your foundation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I can understand how that, how a protection of a roof would be beneficial to your existing structure. Um, but in your meeting of the criteria as being something you want, whereas it's not something that's required, um, it's hard for me. I'm sorry, I'm looking at your house on the other screen. So I'm not speaking to someone over there. Um, and I'm on the Google Earth looking at it. And um, so, I can understand that that is one of your criteria to protect your existing structure. Mm -hmm. But the way that you've answered the variance criteria, um, I don't, I don't think it qualifies as something that I would vote for a variance at this time. Okay, thank you. Bob? Yes, thank you, Sai. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I'll go through the four criteria, how I feel about those. Uh, the homeowner or the, the uh, petitioner were noting before about uh, their setbacks and how uh, other people have, uh, you know, have uh, setbacks that are closer to the street, et cetera, as you walk around town, et cetera. And I just wanted to note that the applicants themselves have a legal, what's considered a legal non-conforming lot. They do not meet uh, the frontage requirement of 100 feet, and they do not meet the lot area of 15,000 square feet that's required today. Now, I'm assuming that back in 1982, when the house was built, the builder was allowed, he got his permits, and that was a legal house back then. But today, it's considered legal non-conforming, that lot. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a particular answer or uh, an example of how something comes into being uh, where the bylaws are different today than what they were back then. And in regards to the four criteria, uh, I don't see how uh, the topography uh, or soil conditions, et cetera, have any uh, impact on your proposal. Uh, the desire of a farmer's porch, just because you would like one, does not warrant 
a variance in this. It's, it, it, you have to show just cause why you uh, need that. And that the topography and soil conditions warrant that too. Uh, a hardship, I would have difficulty with that. Uh, yes, you might consider it a hardship. Is it a severe hardship, a substantial hardship? You're, uh, by not doing this, it would not make the house non-livable or non-habitable. Uh, it's still gonna be the same house. You're not gonna change the value of it, et cetera. Uh, it's just something that you would desire and that does not warrant a variance. Uh, I think it would have a minimal impact to the neighborhood. I don't know if it would have, uh, you know, that it would in fact maybe be an improvement. I don't think it would uh, impact the neighborhood too much. But I do think in criteria four that it would seriously uh, appear to degrade the uh, intent of the town's bylaws of having the 20 foot setback in your frontage and you're asking for uh, an encroachment of four feet into that. And I don't think you would uh, meet uh, criteria four. So I, I, I'm having issues with uh, three of the criteria right off on that. So I'll, uh, I'll let it sit at that right now, Sai. And uh, I know Mark wanted to say something maybe before you commented or maybe after you commented. Thank you. You want to let me talk first, Mark, and then you go after me? Sure, sir. <laughs> Just for clarification, if I read the plot plan, what I'm concluding from that is your current setback is 22 feet. Right. Correct. And you're going, you're going to go, you're going to go into that, so you're really looking for a new frontage of 16 feet. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. The other question I had was, or comment I had was, uh, you, you talked about basement seepage. Are you experiencing any such thing now? So, I don't know if you guys noticed at about 8 o'clock tonight, we just had a major downpour uh, for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, that I haven't been able to go downstairs to look um, to see if I did get any water in the basement. But those are the storms when we have the, the, the quick, uh, a heavy rain like that for a long period of time, um, I will get uh, water in the basement, which then I have to spend hours, you know, vacuuming up in different areas. Um, it typically comes through the front of the house, um, right in the middle of the house. So probably where the stairs are now that, that does not have any covering on it. Um, if, I, if I had a front porch, that would bring the water six feet away from my foundation and push it off to the side of the, uh, the yard. In the course of your thinking about a porch, have you thought about potentially just adding a roof over the current steps? That's well, what that's what probably our, you know, I mean, we want to go big first, um, you know, to see if we could get the farmer's porch. Um, if we don't, then our second step would be to, um, I think the town does allow a four foot uh, pad outside your main door with a covering over it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that would be our alternative plan. Well, I but tend I know, to. And again, I wouldn't know if that would completely solve the problem with the uh, water issue. Yeah. Because that's only four feet. I tend to share the concerns expressed by the other members of the board. Uh, I personally have no problem with the third criteria and frankly, not as bad with, not so much with the fourth one, but the first two are really tough and uh, it's hard to justify as I look at it as well, uh, going along with compliance with those two. But I'll leave it at that at the moment and I'll uh, turn it over to Mark for his comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, unfortunately, I was gonna ask the applicants a question and unfortunately they answered it already. I was gonna ask them um, the, the houses adjacent to them on each side, what their setbacks were. Um, 
I don't. There, is a, there is a little there is a little note in the bylaw about adjacent properties in this setback. Um, but if the it would have to work out that one was at like on the left side of you, that was 12 feet from the road. On the right side of you, that was 16 feet from the road. And then you take your 20, you do the average and bring you down to 16. But if they're all at about 20, that that's not gonna help you. I, I was I was hoping that um, you might have a good answer for that, but unfortunately it is what it is on those other houses. Can I can I run outside and with a tape measure? Um, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the one to the right of us, I I don't think has that much because they have the sidewalk and then their house is, their steps come out. So their front yard is small. The, the one to the left of us, I believe is the same as ours. Yeah. It might be so, a little smaller, but I believe it's the same. So you would actually have an option here if it would require some money and time on your part um if, if you could get a certified plot plan for each of the other properties verifying their setbacks and we can do the average and if the average can bring you at 16 feet you wouldn't need a variance but anything for this so front farmer's porch okay but that, but like if I do the averages in my mind, one has to be at 12 and one has to be at 16 already if you're in the 20 to 22. Right. So, I mean, it, if they're not close, it, it might just be a waste of time and money. But they could certainly go out just on their own and measure. And if it is close, then go to the expense of, of getting a certified plot plan. But it's not right. even close, then, then it wouldn't make any sense. Or I can well, just ask the neighbors not, if they have a certified plot plan in their house. I was going to say, they may already have one. And there actually might be one at the town hall in the public records. So that's that worth considering. That, yeah. You'd need it from your neighbors. You'd need it from your neighbor's plots, not just your own. Right. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, so can we ask the board not to vote tonight? Well, well no, we don't need a variance. The well, only other comment I would make before you get to that point is that Looking at what you want to do, mm -hmm. forget the bylaw at the moment. It is aesthetic, aesthetically, I'll get that word out. <laughs> it looks pretty good. I mean, it, 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 I would think it will enhance the, the, the beauty of the property, okay? okay? But we are stuck with the bylaws. Right. And now you're not totally compliant. I think Mark's suggestion is a good one. Right. It would be nice to get some kind of a certified plot plan and your neighbors may already have one or there may be something existing at the town hall. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, that would maybe support your case, as Mark would say, for not even having to come to us. Uh, but I think that's worth a look-see on your, your part. Uh, if we voted tonight, I think the flavor of what you're hearing is not very good. No, not okay? So we could continue this meeting to some point to give you the opportunity to gather that information and then review this again. Okay, okay. we could do that. Okay. As opposed to voting tonight. Correct. Um, okay. You could uh, go but, forward with Mark's idea even without this application being open as well, um, just okay. so you know. It wouldn't have any yeah, direct if there. Mark's application works out, then we don't even have to come to the board. Is that right. correct, Mark? Correct. Okay. Correct. That's what I hear Mark saying, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so we'll, uh, we'll check out that avenue. Okay. Would you so, like to con oops. Hi, if you want to explain the two things I could do, continue or withdraw, it's up to you. So we can withdraw without prejudice? Is prejudice. That yes. Is that what you'd like to do? Yep. Okay. Gotcha. You got a you got a frown on your face, Hillary. Well, I, are they it. withdrawing it or are they continuing it? No, withdrawing. I think they said. Yeah, they can withdraw and still go forward with Mark's idea if they right. say which. Right. Right. And then I can still come back to the board if I have to. Is that correct? No, you'd have to put a brand new application. But in you it. have to put in a brand new application. 
Oh, okay. okay. All right. So can we? Get, all right. So that's you. why I had the frown. I was. Just continue for a later date. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. No, that's okay. The only date we don't know what to continue it to is, you know, I don't know how long much time it's going to take you for to do that. We we don't know, Cyan, and I do think we have to give a certain date when we continue something, and yeah. then it's, and then it's continued, continued, or whatever. But there has yeah. to be a certain date. Yeah. And I just would like to add, you still have to open to public comment and close if not. You might want that. Yeah. You know. Okay. 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 Let's just take a moment here. I'll open it up for public comment. Is there anyone here? Alex is still here. Mix? I don't know if he has any comments. No, we have no comment. We're their neighbors and just, we would be in favor of putting the front porch on because I think it would look better, but that sounds like that's not a, uh, a benefit to the approval of this, so. Thank you. Thank any you, other comments? That's it. I'll close okay. the public portion of the meeting. Uh, okay, is you what what date would you folks be comfortable with to continue this to? June seventeenth is the next hearing. The next date. meeting. Could you pull something off in that period of time? Sure. Huh? Yes. Okay, then we'll. Uh, you, you're asking us to continue this case until June seventeenth. Yes, please. Do I have a motion for that? So move, Sai. Thank you. We have a second. Anybody? I'll second it. Oh, there you are. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. June thank 17th you very much. at Look 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Maybe not. Maybe <laughs> not. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye. Thanks. There's one subject I'd like to cover before we close, before we adjourn. Me as well, but you first. Okay. Uh, there are four of you whose terms expired uh, or ex is expiring at the end of this month. Right. Myself, Eric, Hillary, and Jamie. Jamie. Wow. Are you all continuing? Yes. Hillary, yes. Jamie. Um, I'm undecided. You're undecided. Yeah. Okay. Eric? I've actually notified the town that I will not be. Okay. And I'm not too. So we got a problem here. Okay. So that's what was going, the start of my discussion was, was right, going go that. Um, Your that turn. Kind of bears the question of, we have a few new applications in the works um, that we can advertise for July if the board wished to go forward with them. But it sounds like I originally thought Jamie was rerunning. Um, so we would have at max four people, which we would need for every hearing to be able to administer a vote if we were to go forward with any new applications. Um, we have not received any ZBA applications as of yet, though they've been posted for both Sai and I believe Eric's positions as they've notified that they won't be continuing. Um, so Jamie, if you aren't continuing, if you could put that notice in sooner than later, it allows us to find someone sooner than later as well. So I, I uh, have, I have an interview with the, uh, select board subcommittee on volunteers next week and great. um i'll probably i will know after after that interview great <laughs> okay um so i guess i will leave it to we have one application on june 17th which you are all eligible to attend and vote now on 19 auburn i guess i will ask the I guess we can't really have hearings in July until we know that we have at least four members. So yeah, I guess that answers my own question. The only other comment I would make, uh, Andrew, and I've made this comment to the town uh, previously, is that I know that my leaving, and now with Eric leaving, we're putting the zoning board in a predicament. And I expressed a willingness 
to, to carry on for another three months to give them the time to find replacements, but I have not heard anything about that. Okay. I remember that. I'm willing to do that, but I'm not signing up for more than three months. Yeah, I remember that request as well. I haven't heard anything on it. I can double check with the subcommittee volunteer committee, whatever the name is. Um, I can double check with them on how that could work or would work, um, if at all possible. But like you said, that's not typically how it's done. Um, I know. So I will get back to you as soon as possible on that. And the other thing I think we should put on the agenda for the 17th is the selection of a new chair and co-chair. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. hoping to do that July 1st with any right. new members. Um, that's, that's usually what we've done in the past, Andrew, you're right, is uh, wait till the first July meeting to do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, um, I'm just trying to count on my fingers. <laughs> um, so the, the board, a full board is five uh, members, yep. correct? Seven yep. members. Five members, two associates. Okay. Right. The five members uh, as of July 1st would be Nick, Bob, and Hillary, Hillary, and you, if so. And me, if I go ahead, and then that still leaves one opening. Am I seeing that? Yep. Understand that correctly? Yep. Yep. But four people is enough for three people is technically enough for quorum. But our special permit votes and variance votes require four in favor because it has to be a super majority of the five. So right. So three is quorum. We technically need four to issue any vote. So okay. what well, are they Beside, I guess, Hillary and myself, no, you're saying no other applications were submitted for ZBA? I, I misunderstood. So that, in, in that situation, that would make me more likely than not to, uh, to, to um, pursue the, the membership. I, I thought I was... Uh, I didn't know I was necessary to fill out the board, but if I am, then I, I would be, um, I'd be hesitant not to, to continue, mm -hmm. not to continue. Yes, uh, th thank you for that. And it would still be your choice, whatever is best for you. So we don't want to push anyone to anything they don't want to do, um, but the board would need as much help, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you can also try to fill the full-time membership position, not just the associate position. Any other comment on that subject? Uh, Sai, other visitors, and I know we've usually done this in the past. What are we going to do? And Andrew may uh, uh, want to comment on this too. What about a written decision on the one case we have tonight? Yep. Um, so... I believe, Bob, if you could write the decision for the withdrawal of 61 summer. I can do that. And then we made the motion on 30 veil. And then we have 30 veil, right. Bob made the first motion as well. Bob made that motion as well. So I did. Bob, if you could draft that decision and send it to Sai and I, <laughs> I will have to connect on the best way for you to sign that. I don't know if you can print it at home and sign it or if you want me to mail it to you and mail it back. Um, we can kind of connect on how that would work, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will print it out, uh, or let, let's say this, I will write them up. Mm -hmm. I can send it to you electronically, Andrew. Should, yep. I, send, should I send it to Cy electronically as the chair yeah. also? And then if he wanted to, he could print it out and sign it and send it to you? Yes, that is. That could work, yeah. Okay, that would be my hopes. Um, do you have a hard copy plan set at, with you, Sai, that you could stamp? Uh, not, not at the moment. Okay, I can get you those and either drop them off or mail them to your house. Okay. Okay. <laughs> or we could have a transfer point somewhere. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Whatever works. As long as you wear a mask and gloves, it's all, I'll, I'll trust mask. you. Okay. Man, there you go. Mask and gloves, hood of the car. Yeah, um, yeah, you got that right. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
just to confirm, it sounds like because we are unaware of the status of members in July, I'm not going to advertise any hearing, new hearings for the first meeting in July as of yet. Um, perhaps the second meeting in July we'll know, have a bit more detail for and confirmation for, but as of what, now. what what the, What's the notification? 14 days? Yes, two weeks prior to. Yeah. Well, if, well, I mean, we'll know by the 17th, I think, by our next meeting. So you would be able to post after that for the first meeting in July, right? No, the 17th would be the date of my first legal ad. I would have to know before then. So I'm fine. It's fine to continue to the second week in July um, because I think that just gives us time for more confirmation. So. Okay. I do have one other question since I've been interrupted. I did go on the TAN website today to try try and uh, try and uh, check the zoning bylaws. I thought I had a copy, but I don't. And when I went on the TAN website, I got a nice uh, screen of the front page, but all the other pages were blank. That's happened to me a few times, but I've refreshed and it's worked. So, um... Okay, I might, uh, I'll try a few more times, and if I'm <laughs> unsuccessful, I might bother you to get to help me out, Andrew. Yeah, I might be able to send you a PDF version. If you if you already have one, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll take a look tomorrow. No rush, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Any other discussion this evening, gentlemen? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'm not a gentleman, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> Lady and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do we have a second? I will second the uh, Thank you. four persons. All uh, in favor. It's got to be unanimous. Yay. Aye. Are you all available on the 17th? Just so I can ask now. I think, that, I think it would be desirable if we could all make it. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. some, of us, some of us, it's our last meeting. Yep. As far as, 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 far as I models. know right now, yeah. Yep. Bring the I, would, I would like to, yeah, and I know you have no control over it, Andrew, but uh, I'd like to get rid of the Zoom as soon as we can and just have regular town hall meetings. Sure, we all do. <laughs> I know you probably do too. Okay. <laughs> thank yeah. you all very much. Went very well thank tonight. You. And Good so night. Stay you. healthy. You as well. Yeah. Stay healthy. You too. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.